Hello, and welcome to West Kids. I'm Miss Jennifer, and today is Dad's Day. Wow, what is special about your dad? Don't tell me, tell your dad. This is a day of hugging and loving and helping. What a great day, Dad's Day. Can you name the first dad in the Bible? Come on. Adam, yeah, exactly. My favorite dad in the Bible is one that had to take a very unusual job. His name was Joseph. And who was, who was Jesus' dad? God. How do you substitute for God? Joseph is an amazing dad in the Bible, and God gave us some wonderful examples. Let's get into God's Word and talk about the Bible. Let's see what's going on. Do you remember what the word gospel means? Remember that? means good news. And do you remember what epistle means? It's a letter. You can have a little letter like a postcard, or you can have a long letter. Paul wrote 13 of the 26 books of the New Testament. He was an important writer in God's work, but it's amazing he didn't start out this way. We first meet Paul in Acts 7. And it's the very last verse in Acts 7. And what he's doing, he's standing there, and the men are getting ready to stone Stephen, and they throw their coats down by the young man, Saul. And so we get to meet Saul. Then we go on over to Acts 8, and he has a fever for going after the Christians. Let's get rid of these people that believe in Jesus. And then in 9, Jesus goes after him and nails him and gets him to work for him. And it's not one of those things where, oh, he's got to go through some learning. He loses his sight right after the light comes down on him. And after some time, Ananias touches his eyes like God told him to, and he can see again. And from that point on, Saul started teaching and preaching Jesus. He knew. So he has this background of Old Testament law. Now, what's really interesting is Saul becomes Paul very simply. If you look at chapter 13, verse 9, it says, and Saul, who was also known as Paul, and that's it. No big deal. He becomes Paul, and he becomes a man of passion for the Lord. So let's start. get started on his books. His books were at, named after the towns in which the church he was addressing uh, for example, the church in Rome that he's talking to. Uh, in Rome, it's uh, like this. You stomp it down and wipe it clean. And he said, to the Romans, which becomes the name of the book, we have a debt to God. And the only way to pay that debt is by the forgiveness and salvation of Jesus Christ which he has given to us. Then we go into 1 Corinthians. Now, there's no 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians. We don't need to do that. 1 Corinthians, banking of the saints. It had become like a New York City, and there was some lying and cheating, and no, oh, we can't live like that as followers of Jesus Christ. Let's get it right. And Paul starts teaching them how to live. So that is as 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, he says, now look, don't question me. I am God's messenger. I have been picked by God. I mean, when the light shines down and says, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? I guess he's talking directly to him, which is what happened on the road to Damascus. So he says, I am God's messenger. And I rejoice with you, Corinthians, for catching on to that letter that I sent you in 1 Corinthians. Then we go to Galatia, and in Galatians, there's, again, conversation about following the Old Testament way of the Old Testament law, the laws of Moses, and that's the only way to do it. When we had the Messiah right there with us, and he unshackles us and lets us live a life of joy. From Galatians, we go to Ephesus. Ephesians, that's the name of that book, and it's a balanced book you have grace through faith. Grace is unmerited favor. There's nothing you can do to earn it. It's given to you by your faith in Jesus Christ. And then you have this wonderful walk 
with the Lord in a, a spirit of joy and harmony. And that's what this book is about. I just, I love it. It's If you want to be encouraged, go to Ephesians. In Philippians, well, it's another book of encouragement because here sits Paul and Silas in jail, just like this. And you think they'd be down and sad and blue. And they're smiling. They're finding joy in Jesus. And that's what Philippians is all about. Now we're going to go to the book of Colossians. And this was some wrong teaching was creeping into the church. And Paul said, "Uh, uh, uh, uh-uh-uh-uh, let your joy show in Christ. If you want to be just like the uh, followers of Jesus Christ, then let your joy show in Colossians. Thessalonica, let me say it right, Thessalonica is the book of Thessalonians. Yay! First Thessalonians is all about staying on target. Now put your hand out like this. Now take the other hand like this. We live in the rocket city, so here we go. Boom! Stay on target. There was a lot of persecution going on in Thessalonica. And Paul wanted to encourage them and say, don't you worry, you keep following what Jesus said to do. Stay on target. Thessalonians 2, he says, keep working. Keep working and watching. Keep working and watching because the Lord is coming. Some people had said, well, the Lord's already come. Uh Uh-uh, he's coming back and you keep working and watching. They were good people in Thessalonica. Now you've gone through several of the books of the New Testament that are written by Paul. It's an exciting study. Open your Bible today and enjoy it. And happy Dad's Day!